let's continue with the configuring easy build command. So I hope the issues have been sorted out for everybody and that you have a working easy build installation. So configuration is the next part in the tutorial. So as I already showed you, the default configuration we get for easy build, which we can check with the show config option, is to, to do basically everything in .local. So since we have installed easy build with pip install dash dash user, we will also get the easy config files that come with easy build in our home.local easy build directory. So everything here is using a home.local, which is not very nice, especially not in an HPC context where your home directory may, may be very limited in terms of disk space. So we will configure easy build um, to do things a little bit differently. How do we do this? So first of all, easy build comes with a whole set of um, configuration settings that you can specify. Um, they are all listed in ab-help. And if you run this, and I will pipe it to less so we can scroll through it. Um, this is all the configuration settings you can set for easy build. And there's a whole, a whole lot of them. We will, of course, not cover all of these um, in this tutorial, but it gives you an idea of the flexibility of easy build, where it provides lots of configuration settings for you to make easy build behave in one way or another. Um, the important settings here are the overall prefix used by easy build. So by default, this is dollar home dot local easy build. And this prefix affects a bunch of other configuration settings. It determines the install path for software and modules, the build path, which is the location for the build directories that easy build will set up uh, to perform an installation. The source path, well, it will look for source files or download them into um, in case they are missing. The repository path is a sort of archives, uh, archive of easy config files you used to install software with. And the container path is where easy build will generate container images uh, if, that's the, if that's a feature you are interested in. So remember the prefix is basically um, an overarching setting that affects many others. Now let's look at each of these separately. The install path, which is by default the same value as the prefix value, specifies the, the location where software will be installed and where modules will be generated. So this is shown here. Um, the default value here is home.local slash easy build. Software will be installed in this location in a subdirectory named software modules will be installed in a subdirectory named modules and actually in a modules all subdirectory since there are separate directories in here as well as we will see later there's a bunch of more information here you can split these locations in two entirely different locations so not have software and modules together in one directory but entirely separate and that's not something we will do here in the tutorial the build path is the location where easy build will create build directories. So these are temporary directories um, where easy build will build the software before installing it into the proper installation location. Um, and per, it's highly recommended to use a fast file system for this, um, which may help a lot in speeding up um, the installation. So typically this is set to either dev shmem, which is a, um, uh, file system in, in memory or a temporary location like temp.user. In this case, we recommend using temp.user because the amount of memory we have in AWS is a bit limited and we may run into problems if we uh, locate the build directories in uh, the in-memory file system. The source path is the location where source files will be either automatically downloaded to or where, where EasyBuild will first look for source files before it tries to download them. Um, so it's important to have this in a shared um, file system location as well. Um, you can specify multiple paths in the source path. So multiple directories can be specified as a value here. The first directory um, will be where EasyBuild tries to, 
tries to download source files too. The other directories are basically read only, so it will only check there if something is already available before trying to download it. So you may have sources in your home directory together with sources somewhere in a shared file system that you don't have write access to. And EasyBuild can consider both before trying to automatically download something. The EasyConfig archive is a separate directory that just has a copy of the EasyConfig files that we have installed with EasyBuild. So that's useful to reproduce installations later or to have an overview of uh, which EasyConfig files were used for doing installations. And then the modules tool and module syntax, that's another configuration setting. So by default, as mentioned, EasyBuild will use LMOD as default modules tool. Um, LMOD is based or is implemented in Lua, but actually supports both Lua and Tickle as module syntax. And you can configure EasyBuild to use the Tickle syntax rather than the default Lua syntax it uses. Uh, there's a small benefit in using Lua as module syntax. It, it makes the modules tool a little bit faster because it doesn't have to translate between Tickle and Lua. So that's the default setting, LMOD as modules tool and Lua as module syntax. In this tutorial, we will not change this, this setting. The robot search part, which is also shown in the output of show config, um, is the locations where EasyBuild will look for easy config files whenever it needs them. We will get to this in the next section of the tutorial and the basic usage um, to see what that means and well, when EasyBuild will look for easy config files. So in this case, it's fine to leave this as the default. We won't have to touch this. The module naming scheme determines how the modules that EasyBuild generates are named. Um, there's the default here is the standard EasyBuild module naming scheme, is, which is a flat naming scheme. We will look at how a different module naming scheme can be used um, when looking at hierarchical module naming schemes. So for now, this is safe to ignore, and we're just going to uh, use the default in the tutorial here. So this is a, a couple of settings that you can specify the overall prefix, the install path, the build path, the source path, the location of the easy configs archive, which modules tool and module syntax EasyBuild should use, the robot search path, which is the location where EasyBuild will look for easy config files, and the module naming scheme. Of course, there's a lot more configuration settings, but we will not cover these, or we will not cover most of these, at least in the tutorial. The next part here is um, more details on the different configuration levels EasyBuild has. So EasyBuild can be configured in three ways, using configuration files, using environment variables, or using command line options to the EB command. So each of these corresponds to a configuration level. So there's three configuration levels. And every of the available configuration settings can be specified on each of these levels. There are no exceptions. These levels follow a particular hierarchy. So there's an order to this, which is important to realize. Um, when you specify something in an easy build configuration file, you're, you're overriding the default values. When you specify a configuration setting through an environment variable, um, this value will be used even if something else is specified in a configuration file. So environment variables have precedence over configuration files. And similarly, when you specify a command line option, this will be the value that is used by EasyBuild, no matter if an environment variable or a, um, the value is also specified in a configuration file. So command line wins over environment variables, which win over configuration files. And there's an example here with the um, fictional uh, magic um, configuration setting that outlines this with a small example. The question that is popping up is the current directory part of the robot search part automatically? Um, not really. So when you, we will get back to this in the basic usage part. Um, when you give it, give the name of an easy config file to the eb command, it will look 
um, in the current directory for that easy config file. Uh, but it will not automatically look for easy config files for dependencies in the current directory. So you have to tell the robot to do that. It will only look for easy config files specified on the EP command line in the current directory. So it's not part, the current directory is not part of the robot search bar. Um, configuration files are the, the bottom configuration level in easy build. So um, you can use configuration files which follow the standard INI format, um, which we will not do here in the tutorial. We will mostly use environment variables to configure EasyBuild, but it's a bit easier to play around with. Um, to get some a starting point for creating a configuration file, you can use the eb config help option. So if you type this, let me pipe it to less so I can show you what it looks like. This will output a full configuration file for every possible configuration setting in EasyBuild, but with everything commented out. So each line here corresponds to one configuration setting that you can enable or, or well, that you can define different from the default. And it, each line cor also comes with a um, corresponding um, comment that also specifies the default value. So. To enable debug logging here, for example, we would uncomment this line and set debug equals one to enable it. And there's a line like this for every possible configuration setting, um, including, for example, so they are sorted alphabetically, which is also useful. For example, install path is listed here as well. Yeah, so this is install path, which we mentioned briefly before where the default is the home directory dot local easy build. So this is a good starting point. You don't have to figure out the syntax for a configuration file yourself. You can use the output of ab dash dash config help. So this short section clarifies that there's a very uh, important difference between easy build configuration files and easy config files. They are two entirely different things. So an easy build configuration file is a way to configure the general behavior of easy build. So to, to specify one or more configuration settings, things like which modules tools to use, uh, which modules tool to use, um, where the location where software should be installed and so on. An easy config file on the other hand, which we will show in the next part of the tutorial, specifies the details for one particular software installation. So things like, the version of the software to install, um, the tool chain to use, and so on. So don't confuse these two, they are very different things, even though the name is somewhat similar. So for most of this tutorial, we will be talking about easy config files. We will largely ignore um, using configuration files to configure easy build. And the next configuration level is using environment variables. So all these environment variables start with easy build underscore. Um, and to map or to figure out which environment variable to um, define, you basically have to take the name of the configuration setting, which is in lowercase in the output of eb dash dash help, make it all uppercase, replace any dashes with underscores, and then add easy build underscore as a prefix. So if we want to specify the module syntax, which is module dash syntax, uh, the, name of, the name of the configuration setting is module dash syntax. So we make this all uppercase, we replace the dash with an underscore, which gives us module syntax in uppercase, and then we prefix it with easy build underscore. So that gives us the name of the environment variable to define. Um, if you make a mistake here, so if you um, either forget the underscore or um, just make a mistake. EasyBuild will pick up any environment variable that is defined with EasyBuild underscore and will complain if it cannot map it to the corresponding uh, configuration settings. So you cannot accidentally um, not configure EasyBuild in a particular way if you use environment variables. Anything that has EasyBuild underscore prefix will, will be picked up by EasyBuild and will be mapped to a configuration setting. And then, of course, the command line options. Um, if you want to make very sure that EasyBuild will 
use a particular value for a configuration setting, you can always use a command line option. Because no matter if it's also specified somewhere else, whatever is specified on the command line will always win. So if we, for example, want to do a test installation of something, uh, we can use dash dash install path on the command line and tell it to, you, uh, tell it to use uh, temp user um, as an in installation location. So that way we are sure that this is where Easybuild will install the software and not somewhere else, depending on the current Easybuild configuration. So with the three levels and all these configuration settings, it may be a bit tricky to remember how Easybuild is configured, which is why we added the uh, dash dash show config option, which will tell you how Easybuild is configured. So as I already showed you, by default, everything is done in .local. If you haven't set any environment variables or not using any configuration files, this is the configuration you will get, which is not recommended for obvious reasons. Um, but as soon as you configure EasyBuild, um, like we are doing here through creating an, an EasyBuild configuration file in the location considered by EasyBuild, so home.config EasyBuild and then config.cfg, is one of the locations where EasyBuild will configure, consider easy, uh, EasyBuild configuration files. We're telling it here to use slash apps as a prefix by specifying this in a configuration file. We're telling EasyBuild to use temp user as the build path by specifying or defining the environment variable. And then we're also, like we did before, um, telling it to use temp user as the install path. If we run all of these, and I can actually do that here in the AWS environment. So we create the configuration file. We define this environment variable. Oops, not this. We define this environment variable and then we run this command, which also tells it to use slash temp as installation, show config will give us a whole different view. So for the build path, it will tell us this was specified through an environment variable using the E, which is temp slash easy build, since easy build is the name of the user here in the container image. Um, the container path is derived from the configuration file through the prefix setting. So this is apps containers. Same for the package path, same for the prefix. Same for the repository path and the source path. So all of these are derived from the prefix we have specified here. Um, and then the install path itself was specified via a command line option. That's where the C stands for. So here the temp dollar user corresponds to this line temp easy build. And the robot path is still the default. We didn't touch this uh, at all. So this is still the default, which picks up the easy config files that come with the easy build installation. So indeed, this output matches with uh, what is mentioned in the tutorial. So remember show config, this is a very handy tool. If you're not sure how easy build is currently configured, you can easily tell. Um, show config will only show part um, of the configuration settings. It will focus on a couple of important ones like build path, install path, um, robot path, source path. It will always show those. And then it will also show anything that's not um, set to the default. So for example, in this case, uh, prefix suddenly appears while it didn't before because we have set the prefix to something that's different from the default. If you want to see the full configuration, the full active configuration, including all the default settings, you can run show full config, I guess. Yeah, so this will give you all the configuration settings and the corresponding value no matter whether it's the default value or not. And of course, here they are sorted alphabetically, which is useful as well. So there's one more um, exercise here in this part, um, which is installing easy build, which we already did before. This should say configure easy build, of course. So here, um, the idea is to configure easy build Make sure you use the easy build subdirectory in home for everything, except for two things. The build directory should go in temp user. 
and the locations to consider for source files should both consider um, easy build sources in your home directory and slash easy build sources, which is in the root of the file system. But make sure that whenever, whenever easy build wants to download source files, it does this in your home directory and not in slash uh, easy build. This is the main exercise here. And when you've managed um, to configure easy build this way, you can try a quick installation um, of a very simple software package to see if things are working correctly. Let's take a look at some of the questions. Is it hard to move away from environment modules and tickle to Elmod and Lua? Does it have any benefit? Ah, and the question was answered in the chat already. So very briefly, um, is it hard to move away from tickle? Not really, because Elmod also supports the tickle format for environment modules. So you can start playing around with tickle um, or with Elmod rather without having to rewrite all your module files. So that's useful. And Elmod does have a bunch of benefits um, on top of the standard Tickle-based implementation. So it has a bunch of features that the Tickle-based implementation does not have. So here, make sure you properly configure EasyBuild um, as, in, as mentioned in the first exercise like this, certainly um, the build directory is important and where EasyBuild will install software, it should be home EasyBuild. Since we're running behind on schedule, um, I will mostly skip the break that we had planned um, right about now, since we're actually one part of the tutorial behind. So I'll try to zip through that a little bit more quickly. So let me spoil the answer of the configuring easy build part. It's actually quite simple. Well, this is part of the answer at least. Um, we can tell we can tell easy build to use dollar home easy build for pretty much everything by specifying the prefix configuration setting. And we can tell it to use temp user for the build directories by setting the build path configuration setting. In the exercise, we had one additional um, thing. So here we tell it to use easy build sources in our home directory to download source files too, and the first part to consider, and it should also consider easy build sources. This corresponds to setting this environment variable source path, which, in, which can have multiple locations. So for the remainder of the tutorial, certainly these first two lines are highly recommended to use in your active configuration. So we'll do exactly this here, including the source path. And if we run show config without any further arguments or options, this is what we should see. Almost everything is specified through an environment variable, except the robot part, which we didn't touch. And everything is done in home username, in this case, easy build, and the easy build subdirectory in there, except for the build part, which is done in temp easy build. So this is the kind of output you should see in choke config. 